So, welcome back to our latest lecture session. So, let us uh, review what we have been up to in the last session. I believe we have started uh, discussing or discussed in greater detail anyway the reduction potential and then applied it to a few uh, different kinds of examples, right. And I guess the basic case is P e is equal to P e naught, right, minus 1 by n log q dash, right. And obviously, this would be applicable for which uh, kind of reaction now most obviously, but we looked at different cases one would be oxidized form accepting electrons and being reduced to its reduced form right. So, for this particular case or you know for any generic case too we can apply this uh, reaction of P equal to P naught minus 1 by n log Q dash right. And then we try to visualize the system in terms of uh, concentration on the y axis and P on the x axis right. For that obviously, the reference was your uh, P naught right and that is similar to your uh, pH and pKa graph that we looked at. So, let us just uh, summarize that again. So, what we have we looked at concentration here and PE here right. So, obviously, if I try to represent this and what is Q dash here. So, I am going to write this as PE naught minus 1 by n log activity of the reduced form by activity of the oxidized form right. So, that is what we have here. So, how do I write this? We know that the reduced form is going to be something like this A reduced and the oxidized form is going to have this behavior A oxidized right. And when would both these particular uh, what do we say concentrations or activities be the same when P e is equal to P e naught right. So, and then we looked at those particular cases when we also had H plus right and also when we had the other elements present and so on. But the take home message was when the P e is low right and especially with reference to your P e naught what does it mean? It would mean that reduced conditions would prevail relative to equilibrium and that is in this particular region obviously when P e is less than P e naught right. And also we looked at the other case when P e is high or P e is greater than uh, let us say uh, P e naught right. So, P e minus P e naught is high. So, what did we look at in that particular context? We know that the activity of the electrons is going to be lower that means obviously, the oxidizing conditions would prevail meaning you would have the oxidized species predominating and that is what you see in this particular region yes. Again the scale is obviously not to graph. So, now let us move on. So, we can understand uh, well, let us say looking at the P e or P naught W values and so on uh, what it is we understand uh, about the system at equilibrium right. So, now we are going to look at let us say understanding the system feasibility. So, I am going to look at the P of two half reactions right and then I will need to be able to figure out let us say which reaction will stay as the reduction rea half reaction and which one will stay uh, you know have to be transformed as the oxidizing reaction as in uh, what am I talking about here. So, let us consider two particular half reactions stoichiometric of uh, A. Uh, plus A right uh, plus let us say N 1 electrons goes to let us say it is uh, what do we say reduced form B right and let us say this has P 1 naught ok and K 1 and let us say the relevant uh, other half reaction is C times C plus N 2 electrons goes to V D D anyway uh, stoichiometric coefficient of A, stoichiometric coefficient of B, stoichiometric coefficient of C and stoichiometric coefficient of D and the relevant reduction potential standard reduction potentials and uh, uh, K 2 equilibrium coefficient values right. So, here we have two half reactions right, but we know that uh, let us say for a particular redox reaction to go through you need to have not just the reduction reactions which both of these are both of these are reduction reactions as in they are accepting the electrons and the reduced uh, forms are being uh, formed here right. It is acceptance of electrons so that is more or less nothing but reduction. But as you know you can never have both uh, just two reductions right you will need to have both a reduction and an oxidation taking place uh, simultaneously right you need to have a transfer of electrons. So, now let us say I need to be able to figure out looking at my particular values of P e and 1 and P e 2 right and having the values of P e 1 naught and P e 2 naught let us say or K 1 and K 2 how can I let us say estimate not estimate I guess understand which particular half reaction will stay as written as in which half reaction will 
go as reduction and which one needs to be reversed and be written as or considered as oxidation right. So, one of these half reactions needs to be swapped right because that means it needs to be written as oxidation. So, for now for my particular case or for our particular example right let us consider that the reaction 1 is going to stay at as it is as in reduction is going to go through and let us consider the case when uh, the second reaction is written as oxidation right. So, in that case let us say what will my overall uh, what do we say uh, reaction be and again now because I have different electrons uh, I mean numbers of electrons involved here right uh, as in N1 electron N1 in one case and N2 in the other case I need to multiply the second reaction by minus N2 and the first reaction by N1 right. So, again uh, let us try to do that and have the overall half reaction right and what is that going to be equal to I need to multiply the first one by N1 and the second one by minus or the first one by N2 and the second one by minus N1 and why is that obviously I need to be able to cancel out the relevant electrons right or the electron transfer needs to be uh, the number of electrons being transferred needs to be the same. So, let me write that out here. So, it is going to be into N2 stoichiometric uh, coefficient of A into A right we will go to N2 stoichiometric coefficient of B times B not into pardon me right times B and here I am going to have plus stoichiometric coefficient N1 times stoichiometric coefficient of D right and here I am going to have again N1 times stoichiometric coefficient of C C right. So, this is my overall uh, what do we say reaction now right and uh, I need to be able to understand uh, this particular system right. So, let me also write down P1 and P2 values here. So, P1 is going to be equal to what now uh, for the uh, non modified or unmodified half reactions I guess P1 not minus what is this please minus 1 by N1 log right and activity of B raised to its stoichiometric coefficient by activity of A raised to its stoichiometric coefficient. This is for just this particular half reaction right and same case for this what is the P value let me write that down. So, P 2 is equal to P naught of the second half reaction by 1 by N 2 because N 2 electrons are being transferred minus log right and what do I have here activity of D raised to its stoichiometric coefficient right by activity of C raised to its stoichiometric coefficient. So, these are obviously your P 1 and P 2 values and considering the case when let us say uh, this particular reaction 1 goes as reduction and 2 goes as oxidation I came up with this particular uh, what do we say overall half reaction right. So, what does that mean now let us say I to be able to calculate the P e of this overall reaction that is going to be equal to P e 1 right minus P e 2 right, but I am also going to have to consider the case when what is this now I multiply this by N 2 and this by N 1 right. So, let us look at that and take that through I guess right. So, the P e of that particular overall reaction is going to be equal to P e 1 naught minus P e 2 naught of these modified or the, these reactions we are not going to uh, expand upon that now because it is going to be erroneous. So, let us just understand that it is the difference in the standard reduction potentials right and what do we have here. So, P e 1 is equal to minus. So, now let us say if it is multiplied by N 2 right the electron transfer would be 1 by N 1 N 2 right minus 1 by N 1 N 2 log right and obviously again if this particular half reaction is multiplied by N 2 it is going to be the case when uh, what would that be now. This particular case would have to be uh, times N 2 here right or to the power of N 2 right log stoichiometric activity of B by activity of A stoichiometric coefficient of B times N 2 right stoichiometric coefficient of A 
times n2 right plus 1 by n1 n2 this is from the second or uh, from p2 right log stoichiometric coefficient of d raised to its stoichiometric coefficient of d multiplied by n1 right by c raised to its stoichiometric coefficient multiplied by n1 right. So, now let us say I want to uh, look at it or simplify it further. So, here again we are requested or we request you not to just uh, you know uh, transform this because it is going to be erroneous let us just try to understand this particular set as the uh, what is it now the difference in the standard reduction potentials of these half reactions right. So, if I say it is minus here 1 by n 1 n 2 right well we and log so, it is still going to be activity of B activity of A right and here it is going to be equal to activity of C by activity of D raised to the relevant stoichiometric coefficient times n 1 right. So, now let us again have a look at our overall half reaction not half reaction pardon me overall reaction and let me write that down here. So, that it makes better sense n 2 times mu a a right plus n 1 stoichiometric coefficient d will go to n 2 stoichiometric coefficient of b b plus n 1 stoichiometric coefficient of c c right. So, if we look at this particular reaction right and look at this set of variable here or variables here what is that equal to now you see that that is nothing but equal to q right q for this particular overall reaction yes. So, again what is q here q is nothing but activity of b raised to its stoichiometric coefficient which in this case is n 2 times mu b and activity of c raised to its stoichiometric coefficient right which in this case is n 1 mu c by activity of a raised to its stoichiometric coefficient which is n 2 mu a right times d raised to its stoichiometric coefficient which is n 1 times mu d right. Again as we see this is nothing but equal to this particular variable right. So, now I can write p e of the overall re reaction as the difference in the standard reduction potentials right minus 1 by n 1 n 2 right log q right n 1 n 2 is obviously the uh, number of electrons being transferred right that is what we saw earlier uh, when we tried to modify the two half reactions. So, n 1 n 2 q is the relevant ion activity product of the overall half reaction right. So, here we did uh, say that uh, this is just the difference in the two uh, standard reduction potentials there is a particular reason why uh, you cannot just expand upon it as 1 by n 1 n 2 log k and uh, get that done you should try that out you will see that it is going to be erroneous let us see how we can get that I guess. How can I get the overall uh, k value? So, I am going to look at log k. So, for the fir particular first half reaction I know it uh, the equilibrium quotient was 1 let us say for 2 it was k 2 right. And how did I get for the overall half reaction to do that I had to multiply k 1 by n 2 and k 2 by minus n 1 right. So, obviously we know from what we did a couple of sessions ago that it is going to be nothing but equal to what now n 2 times log k 1 right minus n 1 log k 2 right and this is something that is logical to and something which we looked at a couple of sessions ago right. So, from here though again I know that p e 1 naught is equal to what now 1 by n 1 log k 1 right and I know that p e 2 naught is equal to 1 by n 2 log k 2 right this is something that I know and obviously what does that mean that means log k 1 is equal to n 1 times p e 1 naught and log k 2 is equal to n 2 times p e 2 naught right. So, what does this transform into right this particular equation what how would that transform into log k of the overall reaction k of the overall reaction is nothing but 
n2 times n1 p0 n2 times n1 p0 right p1 not minus n1 times n2 p2 not right so that's equal to n1 n2 times p1 not minus p2 not right so substituting this particular expression that we have in our earlier equation where we had let's say log uh, q here and p here right i'm going to substitute this particular uh, variable here and let's see how it's going to transform into now right so we end up with pe is equal to 1 by n1 n2 log k minus 1 by n1 n2 log q right and now it guess it's taking a familiar shape so p e is equal to 1 by n1 n2 log k by q right so i guess i shouldn't have written it as p e i should have written it as p e 1 minus p e 2 right so let me continue writing that that's a better way of expressing it right or the correct way let's say p 1 minus p e 2 equal to 1 by n1 n2 log k by q so now i guess we are at a stage where we can try to understand the system anyway i guess we looked at the relevant uh, uh, basic derivation but you don't obviously need to mug that up but you need to understand how to be able to uh, understand the basics here right so obviously what were the assumptions we looked at we looked at the case when the half reaction one is written as reduction right and reaction two we considered that to be the oxidation right that's why we multiplied that by minus n1 right so again in that case what is it that you see here when will p1 or when p1 is greater than p2 right what do you observe here you observe that k is greater than q right so p1 greater than p2 means this is positive and one that would that be the case when k greater than q or q is less than k right again what does this mean now when q is less than k you know that the forward reaction will be favorable right forward reaction is favorable and how did we write the forward reaction or how did we get this particular forward reaction you remember that we consider reduction to be uh, the half reaction one but we swapped the second half reaction in as uh, oxidation right so again this case obviously works out as you see right when will p1 or when will this particular uh, reaction be feasible when q less than k right when q less than k or when k is greater than q obviously when k is greater than q what does that mean again you know inversely here it or conversely it means that p1 is greater than p2 and obviously where did that come from again from considering that reduction is half reaction 1 and oxidation is half reaction 2 and only in that context will we have the forward reaction as feasible so again you know let's try to understand what we have here so what it means is that when you have two half reactions and one of the half reaction is greater than the other let's say in this case we are talking about p1 greater than p2 right so we had two half reactions right and one for one case p1 and one the other case p2 right and when did we see that the reaction would be feasible so let's say if p1 is greater than p2 right what would be the scenario when this particular reaction or uh, redox reaction would be feasible it would be the case when one stays as reduction right but two is considered as oxidation right so obviously what does this mean now the re when p1 is greater than p2 we'll consider one as reduction itself right or as uh, you know the half reaction stays as it is but the second case or the second or the lower p2 value or because of the lower value we will have to see to it that it is considered as oxidation right so again that is the particular case obviously if p1 less than p2 when will the redox reaction be feasible when one is written as oxidation or considered as oxidation and two is considered as reduction which is the way we write it anyway right so we need to now compare two p1 and p2 values let us say or the p values the two p values and then we can identify let us say which reaction is going to go forth as reduction and which reaction is going to go forth as oxidation right so in this context also let us try to look at one particular uh, graph here that i have right so here let us say try let us try to understand the system here let us say so similar to the example that we had here we have let us say uh, uh, 
two redox couples one A reduced and A oxidized right A reduced and A oxidized right and also B reduced and B oxidized right. So, let us just write that down here. So, A oxidized plus N 1 electrons goes to A reduced right similar to let us say reaction 1 that we looked at and A uh, not A pardon me B oxidized plus N 2 electrons goes to B reduced right. And here I have this uh, concentration versus P graph and we have both the relevant uh, piece of information here though right. And here let us try to understand uh, a particular uh, scenario let us say right. Let us try to consider the case when let us say the second reaction is uh, goes as oxidation ok. So, what am I considering here? I am considering that uh, here one will proceed as reduction right and two will go forth as oxidation though, as in this has to be the inverse of this particular half reaction. So, let us try to uh, consider that case I guess right. And then let us consider the two cases when let us say I have P E 1 let us say to be somewhere here let us say P E of A right this is the case and P E B is let us say somewhere here yes. So, let us say this is my case here right and now let us say I am going to consider that uh, it goes through as uh, oxidation here right. So, let us see if that is feasible or not feasible or so on now let us say or let us say you know let us look at one particular case here. So, let us say now I say that when P E 1 is less than P E 2 right that is what you see here. In this case P E 1 is less than P E 2 right, but I am saying that P E 2 is going to go through as uh, what is this now oxidation now right or the reverse reaction for this particular half reaction is going to go through. So, what does that mean? that means obviously your concentration of your oxidized form of B is going to increase right. So, as the reaction goes through initial concentration of B oxidation uh, B in its oxidized form is here and let us say because it is oxidation reaction or the uh, inverse of this not inverse I guess the backward half reaction here right. So, then obviously as you see the B oxidized form is going to increase right and obviously you would see that the B reduced form is going to decrease right that is what you see and obviously then where will the P E B shift it is going to keep shifting to the right the P E B value is going to shift to the right. So, obviously now let us understand what is going to happen with this particular uh, P E 1 case I guess. So, here if we consider that one stays as reduction right. So, if it stays as reduction as in this forward reaction is feasible what does it mean as it goes through or goes forward. A reduction increases and A oxidation decreases. Let us try to plot, plot that here. So, A reduction increases in this direction right and A oxidation decreases in this direction as in P E of A is moving in this direction right. So, what do you see here? P E B is moving out here and P E A is moving out here. So, they are never approaching each other right. So, which is not going to be the case right. Your particular system would try to approach or as in come to a particular equilibrium let us say, but when do you know that equilibrium will exist that will be the case when P E of A is going to be equal to P E of B right. So, for that to be the case in which direction should these particular values of P E A and P E B travel they need to travel towards obviously each other right. So, obviously what does that mean our start assumption initial assumption of 1 going as reduction and 2 going as oxidation will take the system away from equilibrium right. So, that is not how it is going to go through in uh, in nature. So, it wants to uh, what we say reach equilibrium right or P A needs to be equal to P E B right. So, in that case what is it that we need to observe? We need to consider that one would go as oxidation right and two would go as reduction right in this particular case and why is that? That is because P E of B was greater than P E of A right and that is similar to what we discussed earlier too right as in P E 1 minus P E 2 is equal to 1 by N 1 N 2 log of K by Q right this is what we discussed earlier. So, if I write this as uh, P E of A minus let us say P E of B equal to 1 by N 1 N 2 log K by Q right. 
but we know that p of b is greater than p of a p of b is greater than p of a so that means this is a negative value that means what now q is greater than k right that means reaction is infeasible right so obviously when is the reaction feasible let us see that when 1 which is A oxidized plus N1 electrons goes to A reduction is inverse and written as or considered as oxidation right and 2 which is A not A pardon me B oxidized plus N2 electrons goes as uh, goes to B reduction and it is written as or considered as reduction right and why is that again because the P of B is greater than P of A and that is what you see from our particular starting case here right. And now let us consider this particular case obviously when uh, P of uh, I mean B is considered as reduction itself the case with respect to B and the case with respect to A is considered as oxidation. So, let us say for B let us work it out if it goes as reduction right what is going to happen now the B reduced form is going to increase as in this it is going to go in this direction and B oxidized form is going to decrease. So, it has to go in this direction right. So, that means this particular P B is going to shift in this particular case and same case for uh, A let us say what have needs to happen A oxidized form needs to increase because it is written as oxidation. So, in which context or in which particular scenario will that increase as you see it is in here. So, it needs to travel in this particular direction and obviously the reduced form is going to decrease when oxidation occurs. So, it is in this direction right. So, here and so when P E and P E A and P E B meet let us say at one particular scenario when P E A is equal to P E B obviously that is when you will have equilibrium right. And I guess what was the starting uh, uh, point of this particular uh, scenario that P of B was greater than P of A. That is why we had to write for B case it would be or stay as reduction and for A case it would stay a, it would have to be written as or considered as oxidation right. So, that is something that we have to understand. So, we are looking at two particular cases here right are uh, two uh, uh, sets of uh, half reactions. So, how do you determine the reaction feasibility for the overall reaction? So, the overall reaction would be feasible when that half reaction whose reduction potential is higher is written as reduction or in this case P E B because it is higher than P E A it is going to be considered as reduction right and that half reaction whose reduction potential is lower or in this case P E A right that is from my starting uh, points here right is lower will be considered as oxidation and only then will your overall reaction be feasible right. So, I guess uh, you know that is our particular uh, uh, what do we say uh, session for today and I guess I am going to look at the relevant applications from the next class or next session pardon me right. So, we are going to try to bring everything together in the next session as in if you remember I guess uh, we considered initially only what do we say now acids and bases and then looked at complexes precipitation and then reduction potential. So, the next couple of sessions anyway should be able to bring everything together in a pretty uh, what you say good manner let us say if I can uh, that how is it all these three or four uh, environmental process relate to each other right. So, let us uh, take that through in the next uh, couple of sessions I guess and I guess but for today I am done and thank you.